unrevealed sides of the country of stones. New film with a new approach, thousands of hidden corners and events. Here you can see the playing beer and teddy beer, soul of eagle, tenderness of quail, legends and real stories, healing and vital springs and basins. Visit the unrevealed corners of the country of stones with Dr. Suren Vartanian, who is in love with the nature of his fatherland. Discover together and visit those places about which you have heard but never visited. The orientation film Unrevealed Sides of the Country of Stones is just for you. Hello dear viewers, we present to your attention a video film dedicated to Sisian. I am a doctor, I was born and grew up in Sisian. Sisian is my homeland and I love it very much. I have been living my whole life in Sisian and while communicating with nature and with people during my work, I felt that Sisian is an ideal place for a person to live and create. With this film, we have tried to present the information about legends, historical true facts and picturesque places that we have learned from our grandparents, parents and during our life. We aim not only to present this information to you, but also transfer this information to our successors. As every capture has taken one day, we have decided to present the film in days. <laughs> Day first. As I have already mentioned, I am from Sisian. It's a custom in Sisian that a person is known not by his second name, but by his grandfather, father and son. I was born in this house, which was built by Karan Suren. Karan was a father of my grandfather, Suren, who had built this house, and I was born in this house. As my grandfather had built this house, he had built also this water spring in commemoration of the villagers who had died during the Finn War in 1939. Now we will drink water from this spring and we'll go to the house built by my father. People were calling my father as Karan Surens Razmik, and I have lived in that house till I have built my house, and then we will visit my house. <laughs> According to our elders, during Mongol invasion, in order to escape the Tamerlane massacre, the locals find shelter in this church. First, the Mongol Khan ordered to conjugate oxen and by chaining the church tried to destroy it. However, as they did not succeed, he ordered to put wood around the church and fire it. The people who were inside opened the hole and went to the cave below the church, when there was a big reserve of a drinking water. Thus, they saved their lives the second time. After the fire, the walls of the church become black, and for this reason, people called it Black Church, Gara Kilisa. Now the church is called Saint Hovanes.
During capturing our film, we will try to present to your attention those places which were not captured in any film and were not presented at all. Right now, we are near the St. Hovanesh Church of Sisian, in the te territory of a castle holy stone, Tsakkar. From the ancient times, the local used the supernatural properties of this stone. The stone heals the disease of people when passed through the stone. I remember when I was a child, my grandma was taking us here and after certain rituals was assuring that we were healed. After many years, I understood that during the pagan times, when there were no hospitals and medicine per se, people used to visit such places. It is possible that the bioenergetic field of this place is in reality healing. The ritual of Castle Holy Stone is the following. The man stands on the northern side of the stone, touches the left side of the stone and whispers, Divine stone, please, take all my disease and sins and give me health. You should embrace the stone and transfer your negative energy to the stone. When you look at the stone, at first you may think that the hole is too small and it will not be possible for a man to pass through the stone. However, in reality, when you go down in the hole, you have an impression that the stone is widening and man passes through easily. Exiting the hole, the man touches the right side of the stone and whispers, Divine stone, heal me and give me strength. Our ancestry identified passing through the stone with revival. You should repeat the action three to seven times clockwise. According to locals, the castle holy stone stands for maternity. If you look nearby, we we'll see that the stone is in barrier of other stones which symbolize the male. Thus, according to the locals, they defend their mother as a beginning of the life and world. But according to other scientists, this was a castle. From here, we will keep our direction to Zorat's carriage. On the road, we stop at a place to look at the rocks that are surprisingly similar to St. Hovanesh Church of Sisian. In our opinion, it is possible that when building the church, they have duplicated the views of the rocks. According to many scientific works, the location of holes on the stones is directed to planets and asteroids. In the Zoratskare Observatory, besides Zoratskare, there is a place of habitation of ancient people. From our point of view, if there were people here, it means that at that time there was a forest and fauna, but the people lived, and why they had not built their houses from the wood or other materials? In our opinion, if the houses were wooden, they would be greatly damaged by thunders. The other interesting thing is that this corridor was built so long. In our opinion, this corridor is built so long to protect themselves from beasts and animals. If there was no corridor, the animals could catch the people. Besides that, this house has newer histories than Zoratskare, because we can see that for the sailing of the house, the stones from the Zoratskare were used. This is speaking that the apartment was built later. We are in Zoratskare near another apartment, which is more preserved in the upper place. It was not so clear as here. To build the sailing, the rocks were used, whose base is under the ground. And on the upper part, again, these rocks were put as a sailing. If we look from above, in my opinion, we come to a conclusion that when this apartment was built, the people did not have appropriate instruments and means in order to transport these enormously heavy stones. If they had instruments, they would proceed the stones and put more normally. It means that there were no instruments. But if we now will look at these stones, at these stalwarts, at these rocks, if nowadays we will try, let's say a person of my weight, it will not be possible to take and transport this rock. 
This means that people who lived here were physically very healthy and bigger by their anatomical physiognomies than we. And there is a theory that many years ago they were titans and at that time they have drunk vital water which springs under the stones below. We will go downstairs to drink that water. The visitors also visit the place, this place to drink that water. We will drink from that spring and who knows, maybe that water will make us healthier. Day second. On the way to Tigrana Gert, we stand near the Sisian stone pile, which is known to Sisian natives from ancient times. The meaning of this invention is the fact that there are no springs and drinking water in this territory at all. In the old times, the people were implementing agricultural works, sowing, looked after cattle, and therefore they thought that after the winter, when the water is frozen into ice, it is possible that ice will stay between those stones. And when they have have opened those stones as a well, they saw that in reality there were ice resources. In summer they have used this as a drinking water. So this stone pile was not only a stone pile but also served to fill the need of water. Now we are in Tigranadzor, or the Canyon of Tigers, where there are many petroglyphs of tigers. We have invented Tigranadzor by chance, when we were collecting mushrooms. Good mushrooms are growing here. In this gourd, in length of 7 to 10 kilometers, there are rock paintings. It is starting from north. It is almost the end of it. We have been here many times and came to the conclusion that this picture is not a picture of an animal. This is more a picture of a being from other planet, the eyes, head, neck, legs. Moreover, it is drawn in a place that it is like a human face. It is possible that all pictures were drawn by him or creatures like him as a source of information. There are many sites of hunting, many animals, mostly goats and animals like tigers. We have called this canyon the Granadzor. This is a first-hand thing in tourist sphere because we have invented this place and very few people visit this place. We wish that many people will visit this place, both tourists and specialists who are investigating the human origin and rock paintings. It is possible that they will have other opinion than we will have their other conclusions. Here there are many holes on the stones which are similar to those in Zorat's Karer and it is possible that there is a connection between them too. Again, I want to emphasize the opinion that if these holes would be studied by professionals who are studying history, human origin, archaeology, if they will compare the stones, it is possible that they will find a connection or an idea will be born which will be very important for the future of humanity. Here we have met the king of Sunyat's mountains, the bear and the teddy bear, but as the bear is unpredictable, we have left quickly. Do you see that when I am touching the stone, it is very smooth and it is very interesting that on the smooth surfaces, moss is not growing and all rock paintings are drawn on the smooth surfaces like this. In my opinion, the stone was not smooth initially. It was smoothed somehow so that a stone will not undergo corrosion. We can think that it was done by this person. Day 3rd we are now in the historical village Aritu, which is near the Silk Road. Many people call this historical monument the Aritu Death Monument. In our opinion, and not only in our opinion, mostly it is called Victory Art. Why we are talking that picture from behind? Aritu was one of the main foundations of Prince of Sunik, and here was the Calvary of Sunik. This means that before the battle, the army collected here, the commanders climbed on the victory arch from behind and spoke to the army with dedication and love to their fatherland. The victory arch has a Roman Greek style, was built in the 7th century. It is completely stored with all its historical values. This is Cave Aritu III. The Armenian German group of archaeologists is exploring it starting from 2009. This multi-layer monument has served as a mausoleum in Iron Age, and from the man of the old Stone Age, this cave was a seasonal hunting place to live. The archaeologists are sure that here lived anatomically modern people with their cultural manifestations. They were hunting, fishing. The eagle founded here speaks about the thing that they have made clothes from fur and leather of codpieces. 
According to archaeologists, this is the first cave-like monument of Paleolithic era found in current territory of Armenia. We are in Vorotnavank now, on the time when sun goes down, around at 18 and 90 o'clock. This event was eventually noticed by my son. When you look from the window of the small block, you can see the sun, and at the same time you can see the crest of the church from the other window. So we can conclude that not only the churches were built on random places, but also the location of the windows was not random. The people have built it in a way that the sunlight, the hope, is entering the church, and at the same time the light is reflecting on the crest. This is not an accidental, in our opinion. Varatnavank was built in 10th century. It is interesting that here you can see very old signs which are similar to Jewish signs. However, those are old Armenian signs which speaks about the fact that Armenians are of an Aryan race. Here you can see the Aryan crest which was used by Germans during Nazi philosophy. In fact, we have these both signs of our church which was built in the 10th century. Here are Aryan symbols, pyramids, crests, hunting scenes, the symbols like a man and a dragon on the external walls of the church. On our way, we have stopped near the warm water of Waratam village when there are many tourists. We have moved from Sisian to the southeast. We are now in a crossroad. The left road goes to the Lazen village, the right road goes to the newly built church of Darpas and to the village of Lor till Artsvakar, Eagle Stone. The road from Sisian to here is 21 km. Now we will move to the village Lazen by car and from the Lazen village we will move to the Spitakajur, White Water. We moved on foot from Lazen village to the forest and now we are in a crossroad between the roads to the Tatev and Spitakajur. It is two and a half kilometers from Lazen to here. We have passed that way in one hour twenty minutes, having a rest in the nature. Now we will move to on foot to Spitakajur. From Lazen we have reached on foot to Spitakajur. The whole journey took six hours, the journey on foot three and a half and four hours, sometimes sitting and having a rest with wonderful impressions from the nature. We are now in an oxygen ocean. This is an Anapat chapel built in village Lutzen in 1347. The fantastic tree is caused with the chapel during ages and seems that protects this sacred place itself and with its branches. Day 4 Today we moved from south east direction to the new built church Saint Stepanos in village Darpas. The church was built by brothers Aram and Armen Stepanian who are from Darpas and currently live in Moscow. Near Lor village we stopped at the chapel White Crest Spitak Hajj. Afterwards, we visited the St. Georg Church built in 1666. In this village was born the world-famous Armenian poet of the 20th century, Hamos Ahian. We are near Artsvakar, Eagle Stone, which is situated in Shenatag village of Sisian, and the road to that village is near the Silk Road. 
It is clear that this stone was created by God. The length of the stone was measured by different methods. It is 196 meters. According to our information, this is the highest stone in the South Caucasus. Of course, there are many legends and real stories about this district and location. We would like to pay attention to the story which is told by people. Before the revolution, about 100 years ago, there was a man in Shenata whose name was Tertok. He was called Tertok because he was breastfed seven years and he was very strong. One day Tertok met her Turk shepherd and told him, Now I will take the two lambs and go upward this area. You should leave your dogs after me, and if they catch me, I will give two more lambs to you. If no, I will take yours. The turtle has won the betting and took that two lambs. This is one more fact that Armenians were not only very clever, but also very strong physically, because in these mountains only a strong person can live. Day 5. We are on a way which goes to the hot waters of Sunik, Sunaj Jermakhpur. Sunaj Jermakhpur is situated about 25 kilometers far from Sisian. The way to there will take one and a half hours. Not every car can reach there. It is situated on height of 2,300 meters in the most high mountains of Sisian, where the springs of Vorotan River start. The water of Jermakhpur was examined with regards to its effect on the health and its healing effects. This water has a very good effect on muscle skeletal system, nervous system, osteochondrosis, infertility of men and women. So we are now in a place where a person comes with problems and is healed. We can say a person is reborn here. The road here can be called the source of revival, road of reincarnation. Because besides anything else, here on the height of 2,600 kilometers, there is a slight oxygen insufficiency here, as a result of which the capillary that were not functioning will start gradually function, and our important organs, brain, heart, will receive more oxygen and nutrition. And when we return, we have a feeling that we become younger and healthier, and we are newly born. In Christianity, the people are christened in water. The baby is in mother's uh, uterus in water for nine months. And that is the cause that water is symbolizing reincarnation and purity. Day 6. Today we moved to the Tatev Monastery and on our way we stopped near Portakar. The people call this stone Portakar umbilical stone, either from its appearance and similarity with umbilicus or based on its meaning. Because, as our grandfathers told, as people tell, the Portakar is known not only for its appearance, but also because it had healing purpose. In old times, there were child childless families, and there was a woman who was practicing voodoo treatments. With those women, infertile women rose here and have done different movements by touching Portakar with their umbilicus. After that, they became pregnant. As I am a doctor, gynecologist, in my opinion, this had its explanation. 
because when women lay down on the stone, their abdominal pressure increased, and it had a role of massage on the internal organs, including uterus. And it is possible that there was a stimulation of ovaries or the mental belief that they will become pregnant after that. In fact, this place was a place of hope for infertile. On our way to Tatev, we stopped near this colossal sculpture made by man, which has the following history. As the natives tell, once in old times an Armenian wedding was passing this road. Turks had attacked them to steal the bride. The Armenian girl, while trying to defend her innocence, ran through this place and fall herself into the abyss to suicide to escape from Turks. While falling, her skirt opened and played the role of a parachute, and with the help of God, she landed successfully without harm and escaped. And for the fame of that brave bride and all our Armenian women, this monument was built to remind us how brave and courageous are our women. After Harsnakar, we have visited Tatev Monastery. Afterwards, on foot, we passed through Tatev village. The distance from Sisian to here is 60 kilometers. Till Tatev Monastery, we came by car when uh, we were he here about one hour. And in general, we have spent three hours to come here from Sisian. Now we will climb on foot the mountains and through the forests, we'll keep our way to Sisian, village Lezen. It is about half an hour that we are walking from the village and going upwards to the mountains which are seen very clearly. We had completely other feeling when in one hour and fifty minutes we reached this canyon from Tatev. It's a feeling of a victory, particularly for me that in this difficult situation I was able to climb this inclination. It is a feeling of being young, that you are still healthy and can walk and move without any technique and cars. From here the Sisian area is seen and we will move by this way to Lezen. Below is the Lake Shamp with Shamp village, above is village Varutni, on the right side is Ishkhanasar, on the left side is Uhtasar, and downwards is Vorotan Canyon, where the river Vorotan flows. We will go to Lezen through forests. On our way we see many facts that there are many beasts in the forest, bear, wild pigs, wolves and naturally a man can meet them. In fact, the bear had turned this stone to eat the ants under it. Therefore, it is desirable that the big groups are accompanied by the person who understands hunting and the nature, to be prepared to meet wild animals in the forest and to know what to do in such cases to protect people from being hurt. We have finished our today's journey, which we have started from village Tatev and on foot through forests, mountains came to the village Lezen. The length of way is about 16 kilometers. We have passed that way in six hours, but of course we had rest, collected herbs, admired with nature. The mobile phone coverage was available on the whole way and we had very pleasant impressions. We wish all people who will pass this way have good impressions and reach their families without accidents. Day 7. Now we will reach the Sein Vartan Zoravar cultural historical monument which is situated near the village Angirakot. And every year on previous the last Sunday of July, both locals and visitors of Armenia who know about the monument participate to the ritual. As it is known, after accepting Christianity in 301, a problem arose with Iran. Persian king Hasgert II requested that Armenians reject Christianity and accept pagan religion. 
In 405, there was a battle of Avarai on the bank of river Tahmut, and the commander was Vartama Mikonyan. Armenians have defended our religion, the Christianity, and they were the first nation in the world who accepted Christianity. Vartama Mikonyan was wounded during the battle and, as told by natives, was transported to the depths of Armenia. However, he died and was buried in Angiagot, and this monument was built. These people come here every year to show their admiration. The day is called the Day of St. Vartan. This is a day of reincarnation and joy for people, as it shows that we have struggled through years to defend our country. We will get familiarized with the process closer. We are in the alley of Hachkars in Angarakot, as called by people. These ancient Khachkars are witness about our religion, are the symbols of our religion which is attracting many people to Armenia. The fact that needs an attention is that there are not only Christian symbols on Khachkar, there are also signs and symbols that were made centuries ago. It speaks about the fact that old Armenians were very advanced and informed. This is probably the only place in Armenia where the Khachkars are placed in such a density. The place is located 15 kilometers to the east from Angagot village on the basin of river Vorotan. In old times, there was an old place of habitation here, which was not stored, maintained till now. According to a legend, every year, to receive water from the watering of their gardens, the villagers had sacrificed the most beautiful girl to the lion, and the lion gave water in spring and summer months. Once upon a time, a girl from the nearby villages came to the lion and told that she has neither a mother nor a father who can water their garden, and asked the lion to give water for watering the garden with a condition that she will return back after watering the garden. According to the story, the girl was so beautiful that the lion felt in love with her and accepted her condition. The girl returned to the village, watered the garden, and did not return to the lion. From that sadness, the lion was transformed into the stone while waiting for the girl. From that time, every spring, the water flows down the hill so that the girl will water her garden and return back to the lion. And on the hill, the fossilized heart of the lion can be seen so that the girl see and return to the lion. Day 8. Today we have visited Uhtasar, which is situated 25 km far from Sisian in mountains. The height is 3,200 meters. When there are petroglyphs of animals, hunting scenes, and dances. Touching these rock paintings and feeling the smoothness, I would like to repeat the idea that I told in Tigran Azor, that the rock's paintings were not painted on the natural stone, but the stone was smoothed with some instrument, because this smoothness and the fact that moss is not growing here is speaking about that. This petroglyph is especially interesting because opposite of pictures of men, here you can see a woman with breast, fingers and pelvis. So at that time, special attitude was towards women as the beginning of life and maternity. This drop painting is interesting because here we can see sea animal. 
It means that there was water nearby, therefore the animals were painted. This petroglyph is also interesting as it is showing Adam, Yeva, prohibited fruit and snake. As I have told, we are returning from Uhtasar by a contrary way to pass near the Stone River, which length is 70 kilometers and it is uninterrupted Stone River. Day 9. Today we will visit village Dolors and afterwards village Benunis and monastery of Tanahat. This is the 19th century church of Saint Tripsime, which stayed under the waters of Dolors Reservoir in 1974. The church still is standing and can be seen occasionally when the level of reservoir water is going down. We are in village Banunis, which is situated in the southern part of Sisian. It is situated 12 km far from Sisian. By car, it is a way of 40-45 minutes. The village had played a great role in the history. The most prominent part is death monument built in commemoration of Ishkhan Orbeli, who died in 13th century and played a great role in the history of this territory. We have reached today's goal, the Monastery of Tanahat, or as people call it, the Red Monastery, on our way from Banunis. Our way from Banunis took here 1 hour and 30 minutes, and the way here from Sisian is 2 hours. The Tanahat Monastery was built in 4th or 5th century, and it was built from rare stone for this location, Red Hassock, not from the local stones. In the proximity of the monastery, there are many Vishapa cars, dragon stones, and according to the scientists, this place in pagan times were dedicated to goddess Anahit. And afterwards, the monastery was built here. At those times, the monastery had a big impact on the Armenian history. However, it was completely destroyed after the earthquake. Currently, it has the following state. However, many people, pilgrims, visit this place. This is a place of place of sacrifice for Sisian people. Day 10. Today we have visited this old village which is in 15 kilometers far from Sisian, where lived my grandparents. This real story was told by my grandma Astrik and the story was told to her by her grandma Taman, whose ancestors moved to this village from Gharaba. In old times, the family of grandma Taman lived in Jairapari's which was on the bank river of Vorotan. The single son of Grandma Taman, Frangul, saw a dream that their family had made a sacrifice to God in the yard of church named Aaron. During the process, every boy children approached it to whom he had distributed the sacrificed meat. 
Frangu had told his dream to his mother as he woke up and promised to sacrifice the best goat. When in the yard of the church the sacrificed meat was boiling, suddenly a clairvoyant woman named Astrid came. She naked her hand, put her hand into the boiling water, make a crest. After that she put her unhard hand from the boiling water and wait away. At that moment, from the villages nearby, seven boy children came who ate the sacrifice first. After many years, Frank Yul got married with Zaruhi and they had seven boys and a girl who was named Astrik, after the clairvoyant woman. This is a real story and it is symbolic that the dream those seven boy children connect us with God. We were connected with God seven years, uh, 100 years ago and now. Therefore, we must accept, worship and believe. This holy place is situated in the territory of village Ghalajuk among rocks. In early Christian period, people rely on God and built holy and prayer places into the rocks, sometimes in cryptic and hidden places. With this film, we have presented to you only a part of Sisyam picturesque places, taking into consideration that there are still many unrevealed corners. We will try to present them to you later. Hope you like this film and Sisyam interested you, and you will visit it and have unforgettable impressions for our city.